for a taste of some of the area's finest artists. Join us next on Carolina People, here at Collector's Cafe. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're in Myrtle Beach at Collector's Cafe and Art Gallery. We're focused on the fall art show, which kicked off last Wednesday, October 23rd. And we're visiting with the day manager here at Collector's, Sharon Simmons. Good Sharon, morning. Sharon, thanks so much for being with us sure. this morning. Great highlighting the fall art show and so many of the fantastic artists. Just yesterday, uh, Mike Smith was in, one of the owners right. and co-founders of the cafe. I think uh, 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 Karen and Kim were in. Just wonderful hearing about some of their art. Kim, in particular, with that junk art, just Isn't amazing. That great? You've got some spectacular artists we here. We really do. How many artists do you all normally have um, displaying their their fine art? In the show, we try to highlight about 25 of our top artists. And how many pieces would each of them try to get in? A grouping, a nice grouping, is about four to five pieces. Okay. Yeah. Huh, Sharon, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from the area? No, I'm actually from North Carolina. Um, I went to school at UNC Wilmington and mm. I graduated in 87 with um, a communications degree there. And then I moved to the beach. Um, I was employed in retail and um, my employer at the time was friends with Mike Smith and they um, played volleyball together. And that's how I um, came to know Mike. Is that right? That's mm -hmm. how you first met to Mike. Had, had, now, did you meet Tommy at the same time? Or? Right, mm -hmm. because they were friends, and so we all um, became friends around the same time, and this is when um, they had the idea to start Collector's Cafe. Mm -hmm. This was back in 94. Right, back in 94, and um, I would come here on my days off and see what I could do to help the guys um, get the restaurant open and just really were excited about their idea and what they were trying to do here and wanted to be a part of it. So you knew at the outset, I know when, when Mike talked about it yesterday, he talked about their thoughts originally were for a dance club, uh, but then I guess pretty quickly with, their, with his sister's help, they determined that uh, not only were they going to serve coffee and have a coffee house, excuse me, not only were they going to focus on art, they're also going to have a coffee house and needed to serve some, some food as well. Right. I think um, because they realized what a creative concept that they had here, that that was going to be a stronger avenue um, for them, as well as promoting the art and the restaurant. And like I said, the unique concept of Collector's Cafe mm -hmm. was going to be a little bit more of a better avenue than, than the dance club. And you, did you say you studied communications in college? You, right. You never uh -huh. studied art. Uh, no, um, my art background is pretty limited. Um, I do dabble in some craft art, but um, I, I enjoy working with the artist and the art here. Well, speaking mm -hmm. of art, I tell you, Sharon does have a great sense of art. This very artistic tie I'm wearing was, uh, was a kind gift from Sharon many, many months ago, which I wear on a pretty regular basis. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to wear it all week. I'm really excited about it. But I wanted to focus on thinking about some of your activities as day manager Sharon, how long have you been the day manager here? Since um, 97 when I came here, and okay. it was just a need that was a position that was created. Mike and I, of course, stayed in touch um, when I was away for a while, and I had told him when I left that I wanted to be a part of this if, if that became a possibility. And so he called me in 97 and said, you know, we've got a position we need you to fill. Mm -hmm. And um, I was excited because I had moved away from the beach and was excited to get back here. How do you find the artists that, that you all decide you want to exhibit here at the, uh, at the gallery and cafe? We are so lucky because um, Collectors has become so well known that artists pretty much just walk in the door. On the onset, we um, did research and, and brought artists in from the area, mm -hmm. but now it's truly on a daily basis that artists walk in um, mm -hmm. to submit art. So it's, mm -hmm. it's really nice having that. Um, not having to go out and, and look for new artists that were so well known that people mm -hmm. want to come in. And, and is there a particular process you all go by and decide which, which art they'll exhibit or what art's going to be exhibited? Yes, there is. Um, the way an artist would um, exhibit their work here is they present usually um, slides or photographs of their work to a committee based on the owners mm -hmm. and myself. And we sit down and review. And it, it's 
um, particularly if we have the space and if um, it's a theme that we're in need of because we try to display a variety of themes throughout the restaurant mm -hmm. and at that time then we would contact the artist and, and uh, let them bring in the work mm -hmm. and if it's in the middle of a show which we have two shows each year then um, they might have to wait so it really just depends on the need um, for the art. And Sharon, you said normally y'all y'all have about 25 artists going right. at the same time, and a good group, and would be about five pieces. Is, is that what you said? That's right. That's How about right. if an artist came by and and uh, said he had some art in the trunk of his car, and it just happened to be one piece, and it was an incredible piece? Do y'all? Uh, would you say wait and come back with three or four more pieces, or would you go ahead and uh, take it out and? And then determine with the with the two owners and and maybe a, the did you say the night manager as well the four four of y'all right right no as a matter of fact that has happened I had a lady stop by from Florida the other day and she was just traveling with several pieces in her car mm -hmm. and just there were two very incredible pieces and um, so and I kept them so it really um, in that situation we will make exceptions mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if if that happens and. Um, it all depends on the art. Mm -hmm. It really does. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you all kicked off the fall art show last Wednesday. Right. Uh, how long will the show go? Okay, the shows usually last about six months. Okay. And what happens is hopefully that the art will sell. And at that time, what we do is ask the artist who sold the piece. Um, we offer the, them the chance to replace. If not, then perhaps we have an artist waiting in the wings that we weren't mm -hmm. able to kick off the show with that we would replace that art with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Aside from your activities as a day manager here at Collectors, you also dabble in a little bit of art yourself, don't you, Sharon? I do. I've done a couple of things here. Um, similar to Kim Clayton's work, I like to do the craft side of it. But my really what I enjoy is working with the artists here. I learn so much from them, mm -hmm. um, Kim and Karen, and just the different mediums and just the chance to bring more appreciation to art here to Myrtle Beach is mm -hmm. just what I enjoy the most. If a viewer was interested in visiting um, in visiting the, the cafe and art gallery, uh, are you pretty easy to find? Yes, we are. We're located at the north end of Myrtle Beach, okay. and um, we open every day at noon so that people can come by. They can have a cup of coffee with us and tour the gallery, which is usually a better um, time to come by because you can really take your time and you're not having to look over dinner guests and things mm -hmm. like that. And really, um, I'm so excited when people come in and want some explanations on the art or just to tour the gallery. So it's really convenient. Lastly, Sharon, is there any particular artist that inspires you or, or anyone else in particular that inspires you? Um, Patsy Howe, who I think you'll be speaking with later. Um, she is one of the great artists here that she's just been with them since the beginning and she's just so knowledgeable and I've learned a lot from her. But I also enjoy Kim Clayton's work too because I like that style of art. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Sharon Simmons, the day manager here at Collectors Cafe and Art Gallery. Very much the reason why we're highlighting Collectors this, this week and the fall art show that kicked off last week, which will be going on six months. Come by and visit here on 17 Business in Myrtle Beach. Thanks so much for being with Thanks, us this morning, Karen. Sharon. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Cafe and Art Gallery in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on the fall art show that kicked off last week here at the cafe. And we're visiting with one of the artists that's featured in the show, Calvin Blazengame. Calvin, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. A great treat to highlight some of the artists and uh, to highlight much of what's uh, here at Collectors if, for viewers who've never been to the gallery mm -hmm. to come in and check out to many of the wares. And how long? You, are, uh, tell tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, Calvin. Are you originally from the area? Oh, I'm originally from uh, Greenville, South Carolina, okay. and uh, I moved down here about 10 years ago. And uh, had a couple of friends of mine that went to Coastal Carolina and talked me into coming down here and do some artwork, and that's where I wind up, so that's about it. Now, your specialty, which uh, folks would see if they came to the gallery, is caricatures. Mm -hmm. How did you originally get into caricatures? I just kind of fell into it. Uh, I came down here and pretty much wanted to be, a, be an artist, but didn't quite know what direction I wanted to go into. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I like to draw cartoons and stuff like that, so I started doing caricatures, and, and I've been doing caricatures for about, I guess, about 10 years, and I just kind of, like, took that and developed other styles and stuff like that. And right. Did you study art in school? No, I sure didn't. I just kind of grew up doing it, kind of winged it, you know, trial and error. Yeah. Now, you're a full-time artist. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what did you do before getting into art? Did you do something related to art at all? or? Uh... No, I just... Uh, Actually, I just worked worked around, did a lot of odd jobs here and there and stuff like that. And I always drew in my spare time, but I didn't know quite what I wanted to do, you know. So I just kind of like developed my own little style and worked at it. Was there anyone in particular that got you focused on caricatures? Was it just drawing and uh, you found it easy? Yeah, found it easy. Is that yeah. So now, obviously, when I think of caricatures, I think of uh, being down in New Orleans or in Vegas or mm -hmm. in Washington, somewhere at a, a, a big a tourist capital where you're walking through. And is, is it similar to that? The, the big to head, that. small body. Oh yeah. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Fortunately, a lot of people are kind of they they can get the humor in it, so we're we're good. <laughs> oh yeah, I've got uh, four caricatures hanging mm -hmm. up in my office. A huge piece that was done back in '96 oh, okay. at an event of my mom and dad and a cousin of myself. And it is everyone asks about it whenever <laughs> they come to the office. Caricatures are so because there is just that some mm -hmm. humor involved. Are are is there ever caricatures done that are of a real serious nature? I mean, do, uh, do are there any caricatures that are well known for their serious caricatures, or is part of the whole thing? The fact that there's a little humor involved. It's just humor involved mm -hmm. in it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. What's your favorite uh, medium, Calvin? Um, I like uh, pen and ink. I like working with that a lot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I've dabbled along with some pen and ink, some oils and stuff like that. But I, I, I just find pen and inks and black and whites real fun to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, I like the thin lines that I can work with and just kind of. I can I can do all kind of stuff with them. I mm -hmm. can work with all day. Yeah. Doing caricatures, if you and maybe with caricatures it's a little different, but if you start, um, it seems like I'd want a pencil and uh, <laughs> with it a big eraser on it because it seems like if I started, I'd just be dying to uh, to, to erase something to make sure it was just right. Do you feel that way when, whenever you're doing your caricatures, or do you just roll with it? I just kind of roll with it. There are so many caricature artists, you know, around that they work in like pen and inks and, and uh, sometimes they would like pencil it in first. Right. But, you know, in this business you have to, you know, get into it and work it out and roll it out. Really get yeah. in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. That was so, rhythm. so cool. I, it's, uh, you know, when I've seen the caricaturists again in uh, New Orleans or other places in Spain, I remember seeing somebody in, in Madrid who did mm -hmm. caricatures all the time. Oh yeah. And it is an international, I guess most art is international, but I mean it is, uh, it's amazing the well received everywhere. Oh yeah, it's it gets a gets a smile on your face. So, right, you know, right. Pass the time and yeah. plus have that fun doing it. That's a good feeling seeing the smiles on oh, yeah. uh, on the the folks the faces that you're Especially doing. Especially kids, right? I, you know, big fan of the kids, man. I just like to see the kids walk around and have a good time doing oh, it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite subject, Calvin? Uh, a lot. It, it doesn't matter. It's just I'm I'm just kind of humble. And uh, there's no particular favorite subject that I like in particular, just mm -hmm. whatever inspires me. So, mm -hmm. Do you have a shop or a studio that you perform primarily, or do you get out? You said uh, working with kids, you must get out a good bit in public. Mm -hmm. I just I work out of my house a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of people that, um, that I work with that work with kids. Mm -hmm. So that helps me a lot, too. So I, I just don't mind doing it at all. So, mm -hmm. Do you exhibit regularly in art shows? Mm -hmm. Um, I have some stuff in um, a Litchfield at uh, at the Markenberg, and Mike actually is the first place that uh, I just start displaying my work, my pen and ink. So is that right? Oh, Collectors yeah. Cafe, oh, yeah. Collectors. And art gallery is the first mm -hmm. place. You this is the first place. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's amazing. So now you have five pieces exhibited currently, or how how many pieces are you exhibiting here at the uh, at the Fall Art Show? I have four pieces right now. Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. and I have four in uh, Litchfield. You have four down in Litchfield and four mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And are, are, tell the viewers real quick about our art show. It's it, 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 for what you would for what you would uh, put some of your art in. Are they uh, are they all most of the show dedicated to caricaturists or are they dedicated to lots of different art? Lot, lots of different art. Right. You know, people who want to get out there and get get the names out there. And there's a lot of local artists that's been well known. You know, so 
they just kind of cater to everybody. It doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have to be a uh, character artist. But uh, caricature is, is just something I like to do, mm-hmm. and because of that, I just start, you know, working on my other stuff, my pen and ink. So. Cal, we have less than a minute, but I wanted to ask you, do, do you have any creative projects that are currently underway? I have about four of them right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Golly, I think we're going to need to get you back <laughs> on another show to talk about mm-hmm. those because I really wanted to ask you, and I'm, uh, I'm sorry we're getting tight on time, but ah, no uh, can we talk real quick about mm-hmm. this piece you have here? Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, this is uh, called Melody's, Melody's Band. Um, I'm just inspired by a lot of jazz pieces and stuff like that, and I just kind of like the whole fluent uh, action that, that jazz musicians have and the singers, and, and I just like the way, like the way it just comes out. Though, so. That is gorgeous. Thank you. That is truly gorgeous. And if and if folks came into the gallery um, either this week or next week or over the next six months, they'd mm-hmm. have an opportunity. If this hasn't been and these are for sale, if it hadn't been sold, it'll be here. It'll be here. Come on into Collectors Cafe and Art Gallery, North Kings Highway in Myrtle Beach. Check out the 25 artists displaying much of their fine art here at the Fall Art Show. And check out Calvin Blasingame's work as well. Calvin, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. Stay tuned for more Carolina people coming up next. In our gallery, we're focused on the fall art show that kicked off last Wednesday. And we're visiting with one of its artists, Susan Duke. Susan, thanks so much for being with us this nice morning. Nice being here. Very definitely. It's been ex- exciting. Uh, yesterday, we, we focused on a couple of the artists that are displaying, as well as earlier this morning uh, here at the fall art show. I guess they have two shows a year at Collectors and um, yes. bring in a, a number of artists, local artists primarily, but artists as, as far away as Mount Pleasant and Charlotte and, and, and the PD area. We're excited to be visiting with you. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Were you originally from the uh, the area? No, I came from upstate New York, Rochester, mm-hmm. oh, about 30 years ago. And I wasn't painting at that time. And I decided when I got here, it was time to stop making money. And I gave it up. I really did. I went into art. And I stuck with it. Of course, I still have business I have to tend to. Uh, but it was just an urge. I had to find out if I could paint. Mm. And I got, I loved it. And there was no other world. It was art. And I teach and I do all kinds of things. And I'm mm. really involved in Myrtle Beach with the arts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what motivated me to get involved with the arts was the fact that Myrtle Beach was an artsy place. Mm-hmm. And paintings were selling and a lot of things to paint. And uh, that's it. What did you do before you turned to art as a full-time um Career. Um, let's say business entrepreneur, mm-hmm. you know, real estate and the normal stuff that people do to make money. We're pretty heavy in real estate here mm-hmm. now, and mm-hmm. I work at it occasionally. I do a lot of the books and stuff like that. We have a Duke Enterprise is what we're called, Inc. Mm-hmm. And it takes a lot of my time away from my art. But I managed to get some paintings painting in there. And you said you also teach. I teach. I teach four classes a week. Oh, God. Which takes a lot of my time. Yeah. And I teach at the art museum, the Myrtle Beach Art Museum, which was Burroughs and Chapin's. And I teach at Coastal Carolina University one day a week. And I have my shop where I teach two days a week. And that is up near Colonial Mall. Mm. And I go on um, year-round. And that's where the problem is. I'm not giving myself enough time to paint. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. At the teaching you do at your at your shop up near Colonial Mall, are you there the same couple days each week, or Tuesday mornings, Saturday mornings? Okay. And I teach, like I say, year round. And I teach at Coastal Monday mornings. I teach at the Art Museum on Wednesday morning. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Golly, it's a lot you really in a are. week. As right. well as doing Duke right. Enterprises and the activity right. there, helping to keep right. the books. I don't know how you find the time. I don't know. I guess pretty you, good at you it. had to give up your art to a, a small degree, the, the constant painting by doing all the teaching right. and right. remaining active in business. But I enjoy it. And it pleases me to 
put out a lot of artists out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we do, I do give my students a show of their own for 14 years now, and we do it under the clock at Myrtle Square Mall. Mm. Uh, most of them were under the clock. And we have one coming up in March of next year, and all my students from wherever participate, and they sell their art. They sold 50-some pieces last year. Mm. So mm. We, we do pretty well. And they look forward to it, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it. Very professionally done. They all work together. Was there a particular event, Susan, that prompted your interest in becoming an artist, or, or was there a certain time in life where you recognized uh, that art was for you? Did you begin? Obviously, you began as a hobby oh, at yes. some level, and, oh, yes. and then it, it it got you into more of a right. full time position. Nothing. It was just a feeling. Mm -hmm. I wanted to paint. I came down here one. I was down here, and I one of these people that paint on the beach was giving instructions, and I took and I thought, now this is what I've been wanting to do all my life, mm -hmm. and I did it for oh, a couple of three years, and I left it for maybe six months, mm. and then I realized I had to go back, and that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, mm -hmm. I am what you might call a real artist inside because I do love it. Mm. Mm. Have you taken yeah. lessons other than that experience on the beach? Or to... Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I have taken many workshops. Mm. I started with Alex Powers here on the beach. Stayed with him a long time. Mm -hmm. But no, I do a lot of workshops, go out of town to workshops, and uh, did a lot of reading, a lot of whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's working fine. I mean, it's paid off. Mm -hmm. My feeling is if you're going to be an artist, you've got to sacrifice, and you have to keep being serious about your classes. Right, right. You don't come one week and then not the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if you decide you want to paint, I'll have to tell you that. You have to show up every week. <laughs> You've really got to be serious, very definitely. <laughs> right. well, when you, uh, you must have a favorite medium. Uh, oh yes, I'm definitely a watercolorist. Mm -hmm. I do mm -hmm. paint oils, I do pastels. I'm not favoring acrylic. But I do pretty much anything, but my big thing is watercolor. Do you have a favorite subject that you deal with? When people think of Susan Duke and they think of your works, do they think of a particular subject? They put peg me as the flower painting mm -hmm. painter, but I do like still life, and I like landscape. Um, flowers is what I'm pretty well known for, but I try to get away from them. You know, mm -hmm. Can you tell the viewers real quick about one of the pieces you have displayed right behind us? This is what I call a drop color. A drop color I teach. It's just dropping color on a piece of wet paper. Mm. Different colors, no matter what. And then you pull images out. Whatever you happen to see, you pull it out. And in this case, I see flowers. I see stripes. And there's no drawing. There's absolutely nothing. It's all made up. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They're rather difficult to do. Comparing them with a straight, standard drawing, these are more difficult because you're, you're not only painting without a drawing, you're making it up as you go. And there's a lot of colors in that particular painting. Truly, a beautiful piece of that. Thank you. Susan Duke, teaching for many, many years now, committed to the Grand Strand and the area around us. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday mornings, you can catch her in a classroom instructing others and bringing them into the joy which has made her life whole. Susan, thanks so much for being with us this Thank morning. Thank you. I appreciate your having me. Very definitely. Stay tuned for more Carolina People coming up next. Now don't forget the fall art show here at Collector's Cafe in Myrtle Beach till the end of the year. And we want to send a big thanks out to Sharon Simmons, Tommy Davis, and Mike Smith for making this week such a big success.